Hello everyone and welcome to my new series where I'm going to be talking about the American Song Contest. So this is going to be an eight week competition held every Monday in the US, but I have found out that it will be airing in Sweden on Wednesday. I, I don't know where it's airing in other places if you're listening from another country. So hopefully you guys will be able to watch the performances in wherever you guys are. If not, I do think the performances are on YouTube. So I want to hopefully just do an overview every week of the performances, give my thoughts, and we'll just talk about it. But I think a big part of this is I also want to know what you guys think and what you guys want from this type of podcast video series. This is the type of podcast slash video series that only makes sense after you've seen what the heck I'm talking about. So <laughs> make sure you go and watch those first before listening to this. Otherwise, you're probably going to be very lost and not have a clue about what I'm talking about. So with all that being said, um, I do hope you enjoy this video series. I am totally open to suggestions and format ideas and anything. Questions? Send it all my way. This is brand new for me. I'm very nervous, per usual. I just want to make videos that are enjoyable. So if at any point you're like, wow, this video sucks, you're the person that I have, I want to know why in a nice way. Please tell me nicely. <laughs> but I'm totally open to suggestions and hopefully we can create a podcast together where we just talk about the American Song Contest and Eurovision and we'll just uh, hopefully have a fun time. So with all that being said, this is the first episode of this video series and we're talking about week one of the American Song Contest. Everybody, welcome to American Song Contest. Since it is week one, I'm going to definitely provide a little bit of a background here in case you guys are brand new to all of this. Perhaps you're, you're from the US and you're thinking, what the heck is the American Song Contest? But what's exciting is that this is brand new for everybody. The only difference is that uh, it is based off of Eurovision. Uh, so Eurovision, hugely popular in Europe and in many parts of the world. It is the annual song contest. What really helps is if you've actually seen the Eurovision movie. Thank goodness for Will Ferrell for kind of pushing that, that movie and being in it and finally introducing Eurovision to the US. Because as far as I know, not many Americans know about it and especially don't know the hype around it. And I just, I became int um, introduced to Eurovision about three years ago, first time ever like watching it and really hearing about it. And I was hooked. I, I saw Eurovision 2019 and I was blown away. I had no idea that this was going on in Europe every single year. So I felt like I had so much catching up to do. <laughs> so... I, I have tried to do some catching up a little bit. Um, I for sure have watched, you know, 2020. Oh, yeah. So 2020 was canceled. 2021. Uh, I guess that was our, yeah. Tw last year is 2021. And I was thoroughly involved. Like from the beginning, I was on top of everything, made a few videos and I feel like I learned a lot of lessons from making those videos. I made videos talking about the music videos for the songs. And then I talked about the, you know, my predictions and the final results and everything. And you guys, that was my most controversial video I've ever made. <laughs> it's like... This it's just opinions, you guys. I I love Eurovision, so I'm not bashing Eurovision. I just have very strong opinions about certain songs and what I thought was worth winning and and whatever. 
But I got a lot of comments that were basically saying like, yeah, well, you're American and you just like crappy American music. And it was just like, wow, I, I, I was kind of hurt by that. <laughs> it was like, what? I'm trying to be a part of this exciting competition. Like Eurovision is meant to unite everyone. And it's just supposed to be a celebration of cultures and original music. And it's silly, but also really entertaining and lots of memorable moments, whether they're good or bad. But that's why it's all in good fun. And I make a video about what songs I liked and didn't like, and people were not happy with that video. <laughs> I had put like 30 hours of work into that one video where I talked about the results. And to this day, that is my most controversial video. <laughs> so that's, I feel like all of that is to say that this might be, that was a giant disclaimer in a sense where it's like, okay, so just so you know, I have strong opinions, but it's all in good fun. I... I'm just here to poke fun at silly moments. I'm not here to trash talk any of the performers. And luckily, the performers were all really amazing. Uh, so I feel like that's a good transition going into the American Song Contest. The American Song Contest is essentially the Eurovision that it has been brought to the States. And this has been in the works for... A while now. Normally, I'm more prepared with my research, but just going off m my memory, I guess I had read that they wanted to bring Eurovision to the U.S. years and years ago. Like in my head, I'm thinking twenty some years ago. I don't know. Um, for the YouTube video, I will I'll put the accurate info here. And if this does end up being a podcast, then. I am sorry, you will just have to listen to me <laughs> and be unsure about the answer on that. So the good news was that it was it had some Swedish producers are going to be behind the U.S. spinoff, I guess. They're bringing real experts, you know, guys that understand Eurovision. They have done Eurovision before. And so it was like, okay, at least we're getting some legitimate people to try and put this whole thing together in the States. But I will say I was, I have been extremely nervous, like to the point where I almost like felt sick. And it's been a hard thing to try and explain. Growing up with American TV and reality TV my whole life, I just... And then seeing like the magic of Eurovision, my first thought was like, this is never going to work. <laughs> so I've, I've had a very negative attitude. Not that I want to. It was the exact opposite. I think that's why I felt so like, like sick. I felt like guilty because of how much I wanted this to work and how much I thought this will never work. <laughs> So the good news is we have started the competition. The first, uh, the first week of songs was last night. It was two hours long. We'll add that to my complaints list. <laughs> um, but I was really excited to find out that it will be airing in Sweden for sure. I, I don't know about the other countries, but... I just posted a video talking about Melody Festivalen and and their whole competition and who's going to Eurovision. And I was so happy to hear that from the, the comments that were left that they will be able to watch the American Song Contest two days delayed. Most of my audience is Swedish and in Sweden. So if you are watching this or listening to this and... You're confused about why I'm talking about Sweden so much. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I I make videos catered to Sweden. I, I talk about Sweden and Swedish Swedish culture in majority of my videos. So uh, that's usually my reference point when it comes to 
what's happening in Europe and stuff like that. Now, let's get to the competition. I already said that like twice. (laughs) In general, I was so happy with how it went. It was, it was a relief. Like, okay, I'm trying to think, why was it a relief? I guess maybe because there were multiple moments where it felt, it felt like Eurovision. Um, And it was still very American in many ways. But that's good, right? I mean, that's that's the point of Eurovision is celebrating cultures. So of course I want this to feel, you know, have its American touch. And I think it did. Maybe the main <laughs> the main American touch was just how many commercials were in it. <laughs> yeah, I was I, that was something that I was just already so angry about before it even started when I was thinking like America's going to ruin, they're going to ruin the competition. It's not going to have the same spirit as Eurovision. And that's because Eurovision doesn't have commercials. And, uh, and so of course, of course there's commercials in the American song contest. Actually, that would be interesting. Uh, people watching this abroad, they probably, I'm assuming they're going to cut out most of the commercial breaks um, maybe I have a few here and there, but just for reference, in the States, it is a commercial break after every single song. And there were 11 songs, and uh, there, there will be 11 songs each week. So 11 commercial breaks, at least. Who There might have been an extra one in the beginning and the end. Um, yeah, so... What can you do? That's, of course, how how we do TV here. So that was a complaint. But in terms of the performances, everyone sounded so good. Now, with the exception, okay, whew, should I already start off with the <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to stir people up especially after I talked about how Eurovision was like my controversial video. But hear me out guys. My one I I have, you know, several complaints here and there, but out of all the performers, everyone everyone performed really well. But Alexa was was lip syncing come on guys like i'm not crazy to me there is no way that was being sung live and i because she was the second performer i was so just worried because I'm thinking what is this going to be every performance is lip syncing because that would have been outrageous but as far as I know I think all the other songs were sung live a little bit hesitant about Loco from Puerto Rico (laughs) Puerto Rico if I say it the American way um he might have been lip syncing if he was he did it very well and, but he did sound more live. But I mean, Alexa, like I get it. She's dancing like crazy, very good at dancing. But that, you know, when you look at the rules of Eurovision, that is not allowed. You cannot lip sync. And if she moves on to the final because she was lip syncing a song, I have, I have some criticism about that because I do like the song. And after looking online today, there's been a lot of hype around her song specifically. And I'm not against the song and I'm not against her performance. She is great at dancing. I think that would be awesome to have a K-pop song in the final. But if she is lip syncing that, I don't want it. I, I don't think that's fair. I'll just say that. I don't think it's fair for her to compete against others that are singing live. But, hey, I'll leave it up to you guys to add your thoughts in the comments. I mean, does that bother you? I, I'm, I'm thinking directly from the rules of Eurovision. But even, even if those weren't the rules, it's just, you know, I feel like it's always kind of like 
a little bit of a bummer when you find out someone's lip syncing for their performance. Let's all remember Ashley Simpson on SNL. <laughs> the moment that literally ruined her career was when we found out she was lip syncing. And then she did like a little hoedown dance off the screen and they went to commercial break. <laughs> Ah, the good old days. That was like early days of YouTube. (laughs) So the show starts off. The show starts off with my home state. We got Minnesota. You guys, that was so exciting. Knowing that like I've been looking forward to this for a year and we kicked off the whole show So I was very excited because I also knew that meant like, okay, the producers saw something in this performance that they wanted it to be the first one. And I thought they did great. You know, I I do think they, yeah, they sang very well. Although now I feel like I'm never, I'm never quite sure (laughs) who's singing for real now. Because with their performance... I thought they were singing live, or I think it was just the one guy that was mostly singing live. But then after the second performance, I'm like, is everyone going to lip sync? So. Uh, But they did really well. And it was fun because they did their little montage showing Minnesota and First Ave. And... For, you know, for me, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's just downtown. Like, of course, I've been to First Avenue and uh, it's a really famous music venue. They showed all the the stars on that were the painted stars on the wall. And fun fact, Lizzo is also from Minnesota. I've also heard she moved to Minnesota, but I saw Lizzo perform at First Ave in 2000. 13. I think it was 2013. And so we're talking like six, seven years before she really took off and became famous. Yeah, maybe like six years. So that's my little my little fun fact for you. It's like, oh, I saw Lizzo before she was famous. I was pretty close to her too. I was like, I think it was for like a New Year's Eve party and I was only like four rows back or something. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I thought, okay, first performance the group was called yam house song was called ready to go so and now this is the first act to kick off the whole the whole show and already in my notes i wrote so many dancers and that was a continuous thing throughout the whole show so another eurovision rule eurovision i think the rule is no more than six people are allowed on stage I think it's six. That's what I wasn't sure about. Is it five or six? All right, let me look it up. How many people? Okay. If these are the current rules, a maximum of six artists on stage and no live animals. That's okay. That's good that they clarified that. (laughs) Uh, I'm pretty sure they had like 15 people on that stage for the first, first act. And later on, there was another one where it was, it had to be at least 20 people on that stage. And it was, <laughs> it's just so many people. I mean, sometimes that's fine, but it was like, you could tell they were trying to get, get their money's worth. I was like, how much are they paying these dancers? Cause they, they were showing up for almost every song. It was very unnecessary. Mm-hmm. So one thing I do want to talk about as well is the voting because I have looked at the voting rules and I still don't understand them. I couldn't figure out when will we hear the results of the audience vote because uh, so I already I voted last night and it says the voting closes on Wednesday morning which I'm glad that they're allowing, because it's the first year, I'm glad they are allowing people to kind of cast their votes over the next day, even though I don't know how much they have, like they're able to like really monitor voting, uh, like 
What am I trying? Fraud is the first word I'm thinking of. I was like, oh, that sounds way too serious. But you know, they have like a over a day to kind of um, find people to vote. Maybe people who haven't even been watching versus like Eurovision kind of has to be like real time. We're voting now. Voting's closed. Here's the winner. So definitely more urgency or like immediacy with Eurovision. And I'll, I'll let it slide for the American Song Contest because we need to ease into everything and figure out what works. But this is something that I could, I would hope changes in the future, maybe with their voting. Because the other thing was that they didn't, uh, when you vote online, they don't restrict you from voting for your own state, which is another key element of Eurovision is, you know, you can't vote for your own country which is nice. It kind of, it makes you vote for other people. But if you're allowed to vote for your own state, well, guess what? How's New York and California going to do when they have the largest populations? It's like, well, so I just, I just hope that people aren't voting. I mean, I'm I'm sure people are voting for their state because it's their state. I voted for Minnesota because I could. I gave Minnesota 10 points. Now, you can give up to, you could give every artist 10 points if you wanted to. So you didn't have to like distribute different amounts. It was like however many you wanted to any of the artists. So I was like, okay, of course I'll give Minnesota max points. But then I was like, I feel like this is not in the spirit of Eurovision or the American Song Contest. So... And when you, uh, in order to vote on on their website, you do have to create an account, of course, but they do ask you for your zip code. So I put in my zip code, which says I'm in Minnesota. So I thought like, oh, okay, that's how they'll make sure I can't vote for Minnesota. And then I was able to vote for Minnesota anyway. So, and yeah, that would have been a very easy thing to just fake as well. You know, I could have just put in any zip code and voted. So... Uh, okay. I'm rambling a little bit. You know, we're just testing this out. Gotta, gotta get into, (laughs) gotta get into a little bit of a rhythm here. Try to get comfortable with doing these long talks without all the crazy editing. My drink is disgusting, by the way. I, um, I thought... Since I'm so nervous that I'd pour myself a vodka soda and it'd help me help relax a little bit. And instead, it just tastes absolutely disgusting. So I added some orange juice and now it just tastes like disgusting orange juice. So I'm struggling through it, you guys. <laughs> All right. So going back to the performances, I, yeah. So Minnesota did very well. Put me at ease thinking like this show has a chance. (laughs) Uh, And then we had a commercial break and I was like, yeah, all right. It's the American Song Contest. Can't be too surprised. So second performance, which I've already talked about a little bit. So I might go through it a little more quickly now. But second performance was Oklahoma. Uh, The performer was Alexa. Uh, It's stylized. I think the... Yeah, the X is also capitalized, but I don't know why. Her song was called Wonderland, and it was a K-pop song. Yeah, I mean, overall, I have really good comments about it with just, like, really great dancing. It was exciting to see such a heavily produced performance. They went all out with the costumes and the staging and, the you know, the setup, I guess. I also enjoyed that there were even some camera effects added for the viewers at home, which I think that's always like a cool touch that we got to see the performance in a different way compared to the people who were there. I said the song was catchy and good, but not live. And I was pretty upset about it because I I mean, yeah, I already said this, but it was the second performance and I was thinking if it's about to be nine more performances of not singing then this that was back to my thought of like this show has no chance (laughs) but like I said I've seen lots of positive 
reactions to this song. Lots of people are super excited about this K-pop song. And that's where I'm just like, but but she didn't sing alive. So I don't know. Am I alone in this? I feel like I have a, a reasonable reaction. I mean, I I react strongly, but I do feel like I'm allowed to be upset <laughs> that she didn't sing it live if it's going to be a song competition, you know? All of the studio recordings will sound as perfect as it can be, which is why when you sing it live, that can make or break a song. So I think it's too much of an advantage for her to have have the recording because when she's doing these crazy dance moves and not running out of breath, like that really changes how we hear and see the, the song and the performance. So... Yeah, I didn't have much extra to say about that one. So the third performance was Arkansas. The performer, her name is Kelsey Lamb. Song was called Never Like This. And she was singing live. Like it was it was really obvious. It sounded live. You, it, everything matched up vocally and... She sounded good. I haven't I had noted in here that I thought the crowd was too loud. And that was something I kind of felt throughout. And maybe that was one of my observations of how the show felt more American. It was just like the crowd was almost it was almost too much. Uh and I don't know if maybe it was like um it was an audio thing where they just allowed too much. Uh, audience screaming to come through the mics because here she is trying to sing this like nice this nice country style song and is just like screaming in the background Like the screaming works for these high energy songs but it was like when someone's just trying to sing a nice song like please like, just tone it down, you know? She had a bunch of flowers surrounding her, and that looked really nice. I like that they're real, or like, you know, there are petals at the end falling from the ceiling. Very cute. But if you saw my Mellow video, uh, again, I just posted it. So I talk about the Swedish song competition and one of my critiques is that some of their performances, the artists will just stand in one spot for the majority of the song because they have to make sure they don't get out of alignment with the lights and the graphics and stuff like that. And that's what she ran into, uh, was she was just standing on this lit up circle flower bed thing the whole time. And I thought she could have at least like walked around the circle but no, she stayed in one spot the whole time. And it just, I just don't like that type of staging, I guess. The song was also one of my, it was one of my least favorites, but I'd mentioned this in the beginning. Like, it just wasn't for me. I do think it's a nice song and I'm excited to listen to the studio recordings of all of them. And maybe that'll change my mind a little bit, but the live performance felt... Just, I don't know, whatever this reaction is, it was like, oh, that was fine. But it's also a song that I won't be like excited to hear again. I will listen to it again, but you know, I'm not, I'm not big into like country type music. Yeah. After that, we had Indiana. The artist was called UG Skywalkin. The song was called Love in My City. So UG stands for Uganda. That's what that's what he said. So I actually don't know what his real name was. I didn't catch it. But yeah, so he mentioned that he's toured or I don't know, toured or maybe performed on a stage with Wiz Khalifa, Juicy J, and Two Chains. And that was something just throughout the whole night, every time they would uh, introduce the new artists and then talking about their success as a musician. And just, it was really, 
interesting to hear just how how much they've already accomplished as a musician. Because sometimes it feels like, oh, I've never heard of them before. They've never done anything. I feel like that's an easy go-to thought process. But it seems like almost every artist had said, oh, I've I've performed in front of 20,000 people before, or I've actually toured with a famous, you know, a different famous musician, and they've released full albums before. So in general, that was really fun to hear that from, I think, majority of the artists had some sort of successful history in their careers. So, um, but of course, I would love to see someone that's like, I've never performed. I've been just like a, I've, this is like a hidden talent. And now I'm making my debut. I would love to see that. And I, I don't think there was any in this, in this semifinal, at least. But going back to UG Skywalken. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> in my notes, I'm, I said, do they need every dancer every time? This was the one I'm talking about where they had like 20 people on the stage like why it was so overwhelming way too many people did not need that many people uh i don't think it added anything by having that many people yeah (laughs) and then i i made a note that one of the lyrics he's talking about like he's got a few friends i'm like a few there were 20 people up there (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, my dad was not a fan of the song, but he also didn't like the Super Bowl halftime show. Like he just he just doesn't like rap. <laughs> and I do. I do like rap and hip hop. So I thought it was fine. I think I gave this five points out of ten. All right, next we have Puerto Rico, which I feel like I can't actually say it that way every time because I don't I don't speak Spanish, so it just doesn't feel right, I guess. But I'm also very much aware that saying Puerto Rico is definitely wrong, but that's also the American way. So we'll see. We'll see which which one I say as we move on when here. I come back, lo valoro, man. I love you, Puerto Rico. Vamos para arriba. Puerto Rico became part of the United States in 1898. Um, the artist was Christian P- Pagan. I have no idea how to say his name. And the song was called Loco. So I can say that one. Loco with a K. Yeah, so this kind of felt similar to Eurovision in the sense that bigger artists maybe that are more known locally are now finally on a bigger stage and, you know, everyone gets a chance to hear them and see them perform. Yeah, it was fun to have that mix. And we do have a few other U.S. territories that will be in the competition. Um, And I think that'll add a fun variety into the mix. In terms of the song, yeah, I thought it was a bit too generic and too repetitive. But generic and repetitive doesn't mean bad, you know. I think it, uh, it, it's catchy. It could certainly play on the radio or in a nightclub or something. But do I think it's going to win? No. I don't. For me, this wasn't in my top. So if only four songs move on, yeah, I, w- I don't think this would be in my top four. I'll come back at the end and, and tell you guys which four I'm rooting for. And this, at this point, I realized, or at least I was questioning, did Snoop Dogg wear the same outfit that he did at the Super Bowl? And no, but it, I, I think it is the same, but it's just a different color. <laughs> so I don't know what type of outfit this is, but 
you know, at least he has at least two colors of it. So that was something I noticed. All right. Second half of the show, we've got Connecticut. Oh, yeah. Okay. Michael Bolton, who is a famous singer that admittedly, I only knew the name, but if you were to tell, if you were to be like, tell me one song Michael Bolton sang, I'd be like, I have no idea. But if someone were to play a song that I, and maybe I'd recognize it, you know, I'm sure there's songs where I'm like, oh, sure, I know that song, Michael Bolton. So I'm pretty sure that's the case with this. So this was another thing I was worried about going into this whole thing was that they're, they have basically two big names in this competition. I think, I think they were only talking about two, uh, like in the commercials and everything. Michael Bolton was one of them. And Jewel, uh, big in the early 2000s, she'll be representing Alaska. And my first thought was like, that's such an unfair advantage to have really well-known singers in the competition because are they just going to get all the votes because they're well-known? So, and that is something that I guess I don't know if I need to worry about it yet because this ended up being one of my favorite songs. So I I went into this being like, man, people are going to vote for him just because it's Michael Bolton. And then I heard the song and I'm like, I'm going to vote for Michael Bolton. <laughs> like, because not because it's him, but because I thought the song was so good. It was the first song of the night that I was like, turn it up. Like it just oh, gave me goosebumps. Love the graphics. And I guess I was just so blown away by him and his singing ability. Now, I, I, I will be honest. I thought he was more in his late 70s. Uh, so I was a bit surprised to find out he was 69 years old. But he just sang it really well has such a strong voice and he just he just stood there and belted the song and I loved it so here the um, order of my notes I said this feels like Eurovision next line his voice (laughs) next comment but where are the 30 dancers as a joke? And then they opened up the curtains and there were about, I don't know, like 15 people there just not even helping the song. I think they were trying to kind of be like that chorus backup, but they are more just there as like, they just kind of did like move into the music. And I felt like they did not need to be there and they did not add to the performance. I would say if this moves on to the semifinal and the final, that's something I'd take out of that performance because he didn't need it. His song was already just so, it just stood out on its own, you know? After that, we had Iowa. Now for all the international listeners, I'm wondering if this is going to really help you guys out with American geography. Let me, let me know that in the comments. I want to know if you have been learning all kinds of things about the states and what state is what. I will say every time that I'm in Europe and people find out I'm from the U.S., their first question is like, oh, are you from New York? It's like, no, there's a lot more states. (laughs) People will always ask like, oh, are you from New York, Chicago, California, or Texas? It's like, and I get it. Those are those are big ones to know. And then there's 46 more. So Chicago is not a state, by the way. That's just a city. <laughs> um, so, I, uh, yeah, I'm excited to hear if you guys are actually learning about U.S. geography. So Iowa is south of Minnesota. And I'm in Minnesota. So this is all about me, you guys. I'm kidding. Uh, (laughs) But because they're right next to Minnesota, we have a lot of rival, a lot of rivalry going on between us, but not as much as Wisconsin, which is coming up. But okay, the performance. So Elizabeth, with an unusual spelling, Elizabeth Von Presley. And the song was called Wonder. She does say that a 
like a quote that she's heard is that people will say, is this heaven? No, it's Iowa. And no one has ever said that. (laughs) So if you're from, if you're listening to this outside of the U.S. and now you're thinking that Iowa is like heaven, it is not. I promise you, if you go to Iowa, you will be disappointed and if it, if Iowan if Iowans are listening to this, calm down. It's just a joke. We have a rival rivalry. So, <laughs> all right. Her song sounded. I mean, okay. I don't know if this was intentional. She sounded like the artist Pink, but also she loves the color pink. So the whole, just like her outfit, the staging, everything was pink. And then she literally had like the vocals of the artist Pink, and like the like the song itself kind of had that like w- like women power type of vibe to it. I think she even said that's kind of like the point of the song was like girl power, and Pink loves singing that kind of stuff. Now this is another common critique I had for like several of the performances was the lighting was so heavy that it was hard to watch. And so it was like no fault of the performer at all. It was more on the, yeah, the staging and the production where everything was pink to the point that there was just no contrast. Like it was hard to see her. (laughs) In, in a lot of the performance. Um, and that, that comes up later on as well with just there's like so many colors and lights that it was like, it almost looked like you were looking through fog. Sorry, I feel like I've been itching my nose for like the last like five minutes. It's itchy, you guys. Okay, so yeah, she sounded great. I don't think she was lip syncing. And if she wasn't lip syncing... She sounded so good. Like, she sounded so good. I'm wondering if she's lip syncing. So, so for me, this, this isn't my favorite song either. Like, I, I don't, I wouldn't put this in my personal top four. I'm saying that now, but I actually haven't written out my top four yet. And it's only because I know, I know my top two. No, I know my top three. Yeah. So I, I would say for me, the song was in the middle of the pack in terms of the song, but stage presence and vocal wise, man, that might be towards the top. She did really, really well. Um, okay. I keep having an itchy nose, you guys. I can't make it stop. And also this drink is awful. Oh no. It looks like I've been clipping a little bit while recording. Sorry, guys. I'm going to work out all the kinks for the next week. If you're still listening. (laughs) I'm so nervous. All right. Moving on to Minnesota's arch nemesis. It's Wisconsin. Oh, yeah. So I would say when the song started, my first thought was he reminded me of Joe Jonas. Let me know if you agree. And yeah, I had my same thing here. I have too much color as in there was too much color in the lights that it was hard to actually see him and what was going on, uh, which was a shame because he was great. This was actually one of my favorite songs, even though he's from Wisconsin. So (laughs) no, this I there was just something about this song that stood out to me. I think gave me Bruno Mars vibes. You know, he even described himself as nouveau retro. And I did think that was an accurate way of describing it. He has that old fashioned sound that Bruno Mars also likes to copy, but you can definitely tell it's a modern song. So he does, that was a great description that he came up with. So I am basically stealing his description of that. Great vocals. And one thing that I also really liked that I think stood out was he had an instrumental break. And I don't think that happens too often with these types of songs. Even, 
even in like Eurovision and Mellow, it's like to actually get an instrumental break just doesn't happen very often. And I think it's just because with the time limit of only being a three minute song, you can only fit in so many vocals and you don't really have time to really just, you know, take a break from the vocals and let the instruments play. So that was something I actually really liked about this song. All right, now we got with uh, no, we've got Mississippi. K U Kion. Oh, I don't know the pronunciation. Kion Star, and the song was called Fire. I wrote in this one too that the lights were too much, but I really liked this song. This one's a tough one, and like I don't know if this is gonna move on or not. I, it's like I could see this being in the middle of the pack, but also I thought it was good enough to move on. We'll see. I I do think this could also be a song that's going to be really good in the studio recording versus the live. Like the live performance, the live performance was good, but sometimes you just know like the studio recording is going to be amazing. And I I think and I hope that this is going to be one of those songs that you can just, you know, blast on the speaker and whatever. So, oh, one thing I really liked about this song, she actually did a shout out to Mississippi. It was a song that was like for Mississippi. And as far as I know, up until that point, that was the only song that had actually referenced her home state. So... Bonus points for that. I think that was another reason why I'm like, cool. Like, definitely, I, it, it did have that extra touch of like, okay, mentioning her home state. And uh, it felt appropriate for the competition. Oh, I thought I was going to prepare a clever, like, joke for this but I, I haven't thought of anything basically what i wrote down was she wrote a song called fire and then shocker there was fire on the stage all the time tons of pyro flames and then that's when i thought how how smart would it be to write a song about something specific in hopes that the live performance will then have to get that specific thing. And that's where I was going to insert a really funny suggestion for that. And I couldn't think of anything. Like, I'm going to write a song about ice cream. And then that just means you get ice cream all the time. I'm on to something. Like, that's almost a joke. <laughs> okay, again, I will leave this up to you guys. If you guys can think of, like, what's something that you should write a song about so that then the production will have to get that thing for you. I almost had something funny to put there and I didn't think of it in time. So maybe you guys can beat me to it. Let's see. I, ooh, how many are left? Ooh, we only have two left. Okay, okay. Home stretch, you guys. Wyoming. Oh, you guys. We're finally to Wyoming. I mean, come on. On, I was basically screaming when this song was happening. Let's talk about it. Okay, Ryan Charles. We get the full three, four minute intro video showing us his life in Wyoming. And he's a Wyoming boy and it's all about country. And he loves his new pair of boots. And he's a country boy in Wyoming. And out of nowhere, he says the name of the song is New Boot Goofin. And that's when, if I had been drinking something, I would have done a spit take. Because that would have been, <laughs> I was like, what? New Boot Goofin. And it was from that moment I knew that this will be a masterpiece. And it totally was, okay? 
So we're thinking this is going to be a country song for sure. And again, not super into country. And no, it was a hip hop song. It was a rap about his new boots. I now if you ha- if you're listening to this video or podcast and you're like, oh, I didn't even watch the performances yet. Why are you listening to this? I mean, I know I'm giving the recap, but like <laughs> you have to, you have to watch all the performances so that you'll understand at least what I'm talking about. I was basically just in so much shock after that three minute intro video that I enjoyed every second of new boot goofin. Everything. The song was catchy. Why the the girls? I mean, come on, sexy girls throughout the whole thing, just dancing. I like the little like neon lights, and I don't know. I think it was just the whole combination of it where it was so unexpected and yet so amazing. And I th- was thinking right there, this will go viral. That was my first thought. Was like, this will go viral. Yeah, I I guess for me, so at this point, I'm still thinking that Michael Bolton was my favorite song. And then this song happened. It's like, this is my favorite song. And then I thought how silly that was that Michael Bolton and New Boot Goofin were my two favorite songs. And that is the magic of Eurovision and all of these song contests is that these two songs have nothing in common. (laughs) And yet I love them both. I think I know why they hate me. It gotta be the boost. Hey, let's go. Boot goofing in the dumb bag snake skin. So damn fresh that the red is still shaking. He's talking about the the boots. He's like, it's gotta be the boots. So funny. He gave me strong post Malone vibes. Right? I mean, Post Malone also likes to wear kind of like cowboy boots and whatever. But I think it was just kind of like that silliness mixed in with extreme talent. It's like, what is this combination? It's not a parody, and yet it feels like it could be. But it's not embarrassing or cringy. Oh, I loved it. No, I was going to say the craziest part is that even my dad said he actually liked it. And I already mentioned that he doesn't like rap. So that was a huge breakthrough. (laughs) Thanks, Ryan Charles from Wyoming. Okay, finally, we have Rhode Island. And the artist is Houston, song called Held On Too Long. Up until this point, every time they had done their little, like, artist introductions, there had really only been uh, like a little bit of like the sob story, you know, like that's something that I just can't stand with American reality TV shows is just how every person needs to have their their difficult life moment that they overcame. And it just gets so exhausting to hear it from every single performer, every single performer on Idol, America's Got Talent. It's all like that. So I was actually relieved that that wasn't a huge part of the little intro videos. So then going on to Rhode Island, that was his whole thing. He was talking about how tough it was to live in Rhode Island. And he talks about how many like friends or people he knows that didn't make it and that were his age. It's like, oh my gosh. in trouble all the time over here. Oh, uh, yeah, right? Road over yeah. here is really... Just really sad. And, I mean, sure, if it's related to the song. And it was... So, yeah, it was a really sad song. But I just felt like we'd gone a whole show of not getting too upset about people's pasts. And I, I guess I just felt like the his story and his difficult past... He was kind of the only one to really go into that. And after having 10 prior acts that felt a bit more lighthearted, it was like, oh, okay. And this was the final act of the show. So it was kind of a a heavy note to end on. 
So otherwise, I thought he had a great voice. Um, I loved the graphics of on, on the stage. It looked like I think he was like sitting in water or something. One thing I did say was, yeah, so I said great voice, but it felt like it had the same volume the whole time. He he could physically like, you know, make his voice more quieter and more and like belt it out more. But I felt like the instruments were like, whatever, we are one volume. <laughs> so I'll I'll have to give all of these a chance and listen to the actual studio recordings. And we'll see if that changes my mind about it. But because of that, because of this, like the sense of it all felt like it was one continuous energy versus like a varied buildup. Uh, it was not one of my favorite songs. So then we move on to when the jury could pick the like an automatic semifinalist. And then they picked this song, which... I'm always skeptical when it's the final song that gets chosen. It always makes me think like they didn't even, they like forgot that 10 other songs even performed. They're just like, well, I just saw this one and this one was good. I will send this song on. (laughs) And I don't know. I mean, I do get that. Like, yeah, you usually end a show on one of the best or just like strongest performances, you know, but for me, this would this is not the song I would have sent on. I thought I could save us, but I was wrong. I guess we are. Okay, so I know this has been a very long episode and it should not be this long in the in the coming weeks here. But I just had to kind of give the overview, talk about just I just kind of had to introduce it, right? That was probably the first 20 minutes. Um, and then talked about all the artists. Now, after after the whole show, I would say my my top two were New Boot Goofin. I loved it <laughs> from Wyoming. And then um, Michael Bolton from Connecticut. I, of course, voted for Minnesota because apparently I can. And they actually did very well. So voted for them. I loved Wisconsin, but I refused to give them the full points because of our rivalry. So I gave I gave him nine points. And then um, I also gave some points to Mississippi and Indiana, but everyone did so well. And it was it was a nice mix of genres. And I have no idea when we're going to figure out the results. So closing or votes close at 7 a.m. That's a weird time to close the votes. I don't know. 7 a.m. on Wednesday. So tomorrow as of when I'm filming this. But then do we even find out the results or does that happen on Monday next week? I don't know. Overall, I was very happy about it. And I know I've already said it like five times, but it was just a relief to know that it went okay. And I do think that this can do really well. And if if NBC is like worried about how many viewers they had, I, NBC, just chill out. I think people need to find out it's happening. And I'm still convinced most, most people don't know. <laughs> but I think as this starts getting out there and as... Uh, people start talking about it more. And especially when the performances are this good and the songs are this good, that's going to start generating some buzz as well. Like New Boot Goofin might be the reason why a bunch more people will watch. Because if it, like that song to me, like I, like I feel like that could be a viral song on TikTok, right? So, and who knows? I don't, I don't use TikTok. So like, is that a trending song today? That would be amazing. And it's going to be stuff like that that really gets more interest. If people start making memes about this, I think that's going to start generating more interest. Okay, I got to end this podcast, you guys. I'm calling it a podcast slash pop-up series because I don't know what this is yet. Uh, As I've already said, if you guys can give me feedback, what do you guys want to see? What are you guys interested in? You know, I'm giving an overview, but like... 
do you really care about each song or you just want me to give highlights? I don't know. Because it is kind of a long process to go through each one, but I also feel like each one deserves a little bit of time. So I don't know. And hopefully I'd find a friend in the future to do this with me. Because it is kind of weird to just ramble on for an hour and 40 minutes by myself. So that's it, you guys. I am going to end it there and get this out for sun- or Thursday morning. So thanks. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more. And I'll see you guys next week. All right. Talk to you guys later. Hey, though. The hoopers passing my way, darling. I'll be with the shooters. Got myself out of twang. I ain't need a tutor. Always did my thing and left it up to the viewers. I'm new, boo, goo.